Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Statistica Hub. So as you can see, like there is some sort of batch launch and I have already made the some announcement on my channel maybe one week ago. So we are still like, the form is still open so you can just enroll in the course. Like if you are willing to prepare with us for IIT Jam MS 2024, then you can just enroll. Like we will be closing the forms very soon. Okay, so that was some brief intro and like, in case you want to know some details regarding the course, you can just check out our web page, statisticahub.com. You can just check out a lot of more things over there. So that was something about the course. Now let's come to the thing. So you can have some, 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 some things from the here also. The duration of the course will be roughly 10 months and like it will be, uh, the mode will be online. I'm sure that will be online. And I will be taking up the classes over Zoom. And the classes will be like on every weekend. It will be a weekend course. Okay, and the assignments, we'll be assigning some assignments like unit-wise and there will be some tests after roughly two weeks. Okay, like every two weeks, okay. And like there will be some full length test papers also, but they are not yet announced. We will announce them like in the month of December. Okay, so the course is starting from like first of time. So that was all about the course. Now let's try to come on the entity part. Okay, so like this is the main goal for the today's video. Okay, so like you can see, this is the NAT solution, IT MMS 2023, and you know the channel name, fine. Okay, so let's have a discussion on the problem number 41. So the problem number 41, as I can see, this is something, something, something related to limit, okay? So it says that let A, uh, alpha and beta be some real constant, fine. And we are given some function, and you have to find the value of alpha plus beta. So how can I do so? So how can you proceed in this situation? So as I can see, whenever you see any these kind of things, like a very, 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 very tough thing that we can feel. So I can see this is some sort of function. Okay, so there is some function and the function is under integration and then we have to apply the limit. Okay, so if I just check it out, then I can see this is going to be zero. If I go for zero, then I can see this is going to zero and this is going to zero. So this will be some sort of zero by zero format. Okay, to solve that thing, I have to go for allopital rule. So differentiation for the upper part, differentiation for the lower part, that means to say numerator and denominator. So if I go for the basic differentiation, like now you have to differentiate this thing. So in case you don't remember, like how can we do so? So this is something that is known as Newton Leibniz rule. So you just have to apply the Newton Leibniz rule to this function. So that will be nothing. You just have to plug in the upper limiting value in the function. Okay, so if I plug in the upper limiting value, then that will be coming out to be alpha x raised to the power two divided by one plus x raised to the power four. Okay, then just go for the differentiation of the upper part. So the differentiation of the upper part that will be coming out to be one, fine. Then you have to go for the lower point. So this minus, if you plug in the lower function, then you can see that is zero. So that will be coming out to be zero. So that part will be zero. Okay, so that was about the numerator. And what about the denominator? So that will be beta minus cos x. Okay, so that's all that I can see in this particular situation. So if I go for basic calculation, then it's a limit extending to some zero positive. Okay, so how can we solve this thing? So I can just say that this is nothing limit x going to some zero positive, and I can just write alpha x square divided over beta minus cos x into, and we have the thing. If I say, if I just break one more function out of here, that one over x raised to the power four, so that will be limit x tending to zero positive, and we have x square over one plus x raised to the power four. So if you see this limit, then this is going to zero, uh, sorry, yeah, this is going to zero, and this is going to one. So I can see like this is not some indeterminate form. So that function will be coming out to be a particular value. I can see that is coming out to be zero, Hmm. Oh, okay. So technically, I just keep this x square here also. So that will be not x square, that will be one only. Okay, as the function was one. So this function will be coming out to be one. Now we are left with only this part. So I have to solve this part. So if I go for calculation, then that will be coming out to be limit x tending to some zero positive. Fine. Then we have alpha x square divided by beta minus cos x. So how to solve this one? So as I can see, again, I can see, everyone will be like, how can you see? So I can see 
that if I plug in the value zero, then it will be coming out to be zero. And if I go on this thing, then that will be roughly, you can see this must also be in some zero by zero format. So I can just conclude that this part must be zero. So if this part must be zero, that means to say beta must be equal to one. In that situation only, you might be getting a condition that the denominator part is coming out to be zero. Okay, so that's one thing. So I can see the beta will be coming out to be one. So I got the value of beta. Now you have to calculate the alpha. So if I go for differentiation, like again, this is zero by zero. So I will go for differentiation. So the differentiation will be limit x tending to some zero positive, And we have two alpha x divided by what will be this value? So that will be canceling out and we have like minus minus plus. So that will be sine x. Okay. And this value is given to be one. Okay. Now this thing is constant. Okay. So that will be coming out. So two alpha limit x tending to some zero positive and we have x over sine x. So I can see, <laughs> okay. So we know this thing will be coming out to be one. Okay. And that will be one. So you can just write two alpha will be one. And I can conclude alpha is one over two. So I got the value of alpha and I got the value of beta. And we were supposed to find the summation of them. So I can just write alpha plus beta. That will be one plus one over two. Yeah, so that will be three over two. Okay, so I think that will be the answer. Okay, so that was about the problem number 41. So let's have a discussion on the problem number 42. Okay, so this is the problem number 42. So we are given some x1, x2, so on x and b random sample from some normal zero comma sigma square. Okay, so it says that you have some population. Okay, so this is my population. Say so this is normal zero comma sigma square. So this is the population, and it says that you are taking out a sample size n equal to ten. So you are having some observation x one so 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 x ten. Okay, and sigma is greater than zero. Yeah, we know that thing. Okay some unknown parameter okay this is unknown we don't know the value of this thing for some real constant c let y equal to c over 10 summation i running from 1 to 10 mode of xi is an unbiased estimator okay so just apply the basic definition of unbiasedness so it says that y is unbiased estimator of sigma that's the thing that i can see so you can just write expectation of y that will be coming out to be sigma now the point is we don't know how to find this expectation because this is some sort of function. So if you go for the basic formulas that we know, so expectation of C over 10, and we have summation I running from one to 10 mode of X I, that will be given to Sigma. Now you have to solve this thing. So how can we proceed in this situation? So there is constant term, I can take the constant term to be outside. So that will be coming out to be C over 10. And I can write this to be summation I running from one to 10. And we have expectation of mode of XI. Yeah, that's the thing that I can write it. Okay, so that will be Sigma. Now, if this X is following some normal zero comma Sigma square, then you have some rule that expectation of mode of XI that will be under root two over pi sigma. So you have to remember few results from some standard books. Okay, so that's the thing that I'm going to use. So in this situation that will be coming out to be C over 10 and you have to go for summation I running from one to 10 and the expectation of this value that will be under root two over pi and we have sigma. So that will be given to be sigma. So if you sum over all the values of i, then that will be coming out to be 10. So c over 10 into 10 times so root 2 over pi and we have dot sigma. Okay, so that's the all that I could calculate. So that is coming out to be sigma. So I can see sigma, sigma canceling out, 10, 10 canceling out. So you are left with only this one value maybe c into root 2 over pi that is coming out to be 1. So c is nothing that will be root pi over 2. So just go for basic calculation 22 by 7. Okay, so that will be 11 over 7. Okay, so that's how we calculate the value C in this problem. Okay, so again, slightly not so easy problem like you need to know few results from the book, standard books. Okay, so that's all. Now if I go for the next problem, so the problem number 43. So we have some sort of series given to us. Okay. Okay, so in this problem, like I can see like this appear to be difficult. This problem appear to be difficult, I agree. Okay, but if you just observe few things that, okay, this is something like A plus B over some C. So I can just write A over C plus B over C. And this is like summation, summation. Now, if you go to this term, 
then you can see one over four raised to the power k minus one. Now that is something that is like very common thing, g. Okay, the remaining part will be k times two raised to the power k over four k minus one. Now it appeared to be difficult, but as I can see, this is two raised to the power k, and this is appearing to be like two raised to the power two k minus one. Can you see this thing? So if you are able to see this thing, then you can just write it down to be k times two raised to the power k divided by two raised to the power two k divided by two raised to the power two. We can write in this sense. So this will be roughly coming out to be. I can see that will be something. I miss out. Okay. So this can be written to be summation k running from one to n one over four raised to the power k minus one. Okay. And the second term will be summation. We have summation k running from one to n, and we have k two raised to the power k over two raised to the power two k into two raised to the power two. Okay. I got. I feel that you got. How did I write this thing? Okay, so I can see I can just cancel this out with this value, and I will be getting two raised to the power k. Okay, so no issue in this thing like that is like easy to put. Okay, now I can see this is coming out to be four. Okay, so you can just cancel out, or you maybe you can just keep it. So if I go for calculating these things, and that will be coming out to be summation k running from one to n, and we have four times k. And divided by two raised to the power k. Okay, so that's the thing that I can see. So you can just calculate this thing to be. I can just see. Okay, just try to expand this thing. So that will be four times we have one over two raised to the power one plus two over two raised to the power two plus three over two raised to the power three plus so on. So you can see this is some sort of AGP. Okay, so in case you don't know how to solve AGP, so just consider this complete to be some S. Okay, so the S is given to be one over two plus two over two square plus three over three two cube plus so on. So you can see the ratio, the difference. So that is one over two. So just multiply this S by one over two. So one over two S that is coming out to be. Now just multiply all these terms by one over two, but Just try to write them in the next term. So one over two multiplied by one over two, so that will be one over two raised to the power two. Next value will be two over two raised to the power three, and so on. Now just try to subtract them. So you will be getting one over two s that will be coming out to be one over two plus one over two square plus so on. So you can see again we are getting some sort of GP. So that will be one over two a over uh, one minus r. That was the formula. So one minus one over two, so that will be two, and again, so I think that will be coming out to be one. Or did I made some mistake? Maybe, maybe. Okay, so this is coming out to be one in my calculation. You can just cross check. So the s will be coming out to be two. Okay, so my s is coming out to be two, and we had four outside, so I can just multiply four over two, that equal to eight. So we are getting this summation to be eight. Now this summation is nothing. You can just see that calculation is very easy. Just plug in the value one, so you'll be getting one plus one over. If you plug in the value two, so four plus one over four square plus so on. So that is nothing. One over one minus one over four. Okay. So four minus one that will be three and four. So that will be four over three, and the remaining part was eight. So just plus that thing, then that will be your final answer. Okay, so that's how we solve the problem number forty one, forty two, and forty three. So I hope that you got how to calculate these kind of problems. So these are not so tough, but yeah, you need to just practice them all. Okay, so apart from that, again, in case you want to be a part of our course, you can just enroll. You can just check out our website, or I will just drop uh, in the comment section or in the description some link regarding this. You can just enroll in the course. Okay, so that's all for today's video. Thanks. Have a great day.